Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're gonna be looking at the Advanced card. Now the Advanced card is similar to the native card that's built into Power BI, but it has a lot more customizations. You're gonna see as we work with this one, you can actually do some conditional statements with inside the visual itself. You can also do some highly customizable borders, as well as changing the colors as you're seeing on the right-hand side. You can ad also adapt the tooltip. So the tooltip has some functionality in it that's additional to what you would normally have available to you. So it's a nice little way to be able to enhance what the native card can do through this custom visual. Like I mentioned, you can also do some conditional formatting based on a measure. So if you have a measure that you want to conditionally format the text of your visual, you can do that. You can conditionally format the foreground or the font. And it's a nice way, again, to be able to enhance what's available inside of the native card. You can see who this one is developed by below. Let's go ahead and jump right into an example of how we can use the advanced card on our own. All right, so in this example, we're gonna be looking at some traditional sales data, but really the data set doesn't matter for this one. You can do any kind of data set with this. So I'm gonna be going up to the Get Data section, and we're gonna select Excel, and I'm gonna be pulling in some data from this one here called Coffee Chain. So it's actually some data I have from a coffee chain that's made up, but we'll be pulling this in, and I'll select the sales data and load this into my data model. So pretty straightforward stuff, just connecting to my data set, getting that in here, making it available for this demonstration. We're then gonna connect and bring in the custom visual. We can do that by going up to the marketplace up top here and selecting from marketplace. And then we'll choose or search for, you can search for card if you want, you can search for advance if you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and select the advanced card and choose add. And that will add that into our visualization pane on the right hand side. And before we get going with using this, I'm gonna also bring in a slicer. So to, the reason why I wanna bring in a slicer is to really show you some of the conditional formatting that can occur whenever you're using this card slicer. So I'm gonna bring in the our card, card visual. So I'm gonna bring in a slicer and we're gonna bring in the state into that slicer. And I'll bump up the text size of that a little bit so we can actually see that. And then we'll uh, start to use this and you'll see how we can actually leverage the slicer with the card visual as we get going here. All right, so I've got the slicer added in. Now let's go ahead and add in the card. The advanced card can be selected here. And inside the advanced card, we're gonna go ahead and bring into our data field, we're gonna bring in the sales. And inside of the tooltip, we may wanna bring in something like the profit. Now you could also bring in, uh, actually the tooltip is gonna be profit, that's fine. And inside the conditional field, you can bring in something else. So if you wanna base the conditional formatting of the text inside of this visual based on an existing measure that you have or add in another measure, you can do that. In our scenario, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in sales again as our conditional field because we're gonna use that as the purpose or the, the, the leverage point for our conditional statements that we're gonna do. All right, now as you can see, the visual here has been created rather large, so I'm gonna resize this a little bit, especially because the size of this is gonna impact the way we can do some of our formatting as far as the way that the border looks and things like that. So I have the visual selected. I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the formatting section now, and there's a lot of formatting options that you have available here. We're gonna start our way on the top and work our way down. We're gonna start underneath the data label section where you can affect the data label that's appearing here. Right now it says 200, or sorry, 820,000. Uh, this is in dollars. You can change this here if you wanna display it in just a normal amount. You can change that from displaying as auto to none, and that way it'll just display the value as it should appear. You can also change the color of the text if you wanted to, so you can uh, do that, but we're actually gonna make that conditional later, so I'm not gonna worry about messing with that right now. I will also, however, though, turn on the bold setting here to make it stand out a little bit more. You could also change the font family. If you wanted to use a different font than the default here, you can choose whatever you'd like. Working our way down a little bit more, you'll see the category label. That's right below here where it says sales. If we go underneath the category label, we can change this a bit. We can make this more of a pure black if we want, as opposed to the off-color gray. We could also bump up the font size here a little bit. So maybe we make it a 16 point font instead of a 12 point font. We can bump that up a little bit. And then we, maybe we also make this one bold as well. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's work our way down a little bit more. You can see there's a prefix label section. Under the prefix label section, you may or may not want this, but if you turn on the prefix label, this allows you to actually prefix the number with some kind of text. So you can put whatever you want here. And whatever you, you know, if it makes sense, you can type in whatever kind of prefix you want on the number, and you can bump up the spacing or the padding between the value and the actual number here. So you have an end, end spacing where you can kind of bump that up, or you can match up the font type here as well. In my scenario, it really doesn't make sense for me to do this, so I'm going to turn off this and revert it to default and get rid of that prefix label. 
You can do the same thing with the postfix here. You can turn on the postfix, add whatever you want as a postfix. Same idea as the prefix, it's just at the end. That's the idea of the postfix here. Again, I'm going to turn those off. No need for that in my example. In fact, I'm going to make sure to revert it to default so that it does not hold on to anything that I had there for a moment. Then you can see underneath show background, underneath the show background section here, you can turn that on and you can actually add a background color to this particular visual. This is a different background than the one that you would normally see down here in the bottom. This is a background that's going to be just within the range of your border. So you're going to see we're going to create a border in a few moments. And this background is within the range of that border. And the border can actually be adjusted to have curves in it and things like that. So this show background is different than the background that you would normally have in every one of the visuals that are available. So on this show background, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And I'm going to make it set to maybe a light color blue here, something like that. And then some of the settings that we're going to do later on will affect what, you know, the, really the range of where that background color is shown. All right, so we're going to go ahead and turn that on as a light blue color here. I think I selected the very top one. And we'll move on to our next setting. Underneath show stroke, we're going to turn this on. And when we turn this on, we can set this to a color. Maybe I'm going to make the color of the stroke more of a pure black here. And what we can do is we can actually adjust the stroke to have a different stroke type. So you can have dashes or dots, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go with the dashes here. And you can change the stroke width. So maybe I make this a four-point stroke width here so it stands out a little bit more. And then you can really do some interesting things down below where you can turn on the curve nature of the stroke. So here I can make it where the top is kind of curved, where the bottom is not. Or I can turn on that curve all the way around. So kind of, it's kind of a nice rounded look to our curve. You can also bump up the radius of that. So if I bump this up from right now, it's set to 14 to something like 25, you can see it's a more significant curve to it. And you can go even, even further than that if you wanted to. But I actually kind of like the 25. I think 25 is a good radius curve there. If you continue to turn some of these on, you'll actually see it start to invert your curves. So check this out. If I turn on top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, you can see it actually almost looks like a movie ticket now, the way that we've designed this because it's got this rounded edge that curves inward now. And that's the, the last couple settings that we turned on with inside of the, the stroke here. You can actually make it go inward. And if you wanted to, you could have turned off some of the top ones and just had it go inward one way. That's up to you how you want to do that. But it's a nice way to be able to kind of have a customized look to your card. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is, remember I mentioned the background color earlier. The background color, you'll notice, is staying within our stroke here, our border that we have. So that's one thing to keep in mind, that even though as we adjusted that stroke, that it kept the background color within that range. All right, next we're going to look at the condition section. So let's go ahead and uh, expand and turn on the condition section. And you can tell it the number of conditions that you want. In our case, we're actually going to have three different conditions. So I'm going to turn on three. And when you turn on three different conditions, you'll actually see that there are three options here, basically three different if statements that you can pass in. And so what, what I might do here is I'm going to say if the value, and remember the value is based on what we have here underneath the field list for a conditional field or condition field. This is going to be based off of the value that you place inside here, or the field you place inside here. So when we're looking at the conditional statement, when we say if the value, it's the value it's referring to in this case is sales. If the value is greater than 45,000, then I want the, let's say, foreground to be green. And I'll select a custom green here. And you can see it adjusts the color. Then you can say if the value, which again is based on sales, is greater than 30,000, then I want it to return back the color in yellow. Okay, let's make it more of a pure yellow here. And then I'll have one last if statement. And in this if statement, I'm going to say if the value is less than or equal to 30,000, then I wanted to return back red. Okay, so you could have also done this through, through the background color. So you could have adjusted. Right now, we've set the background color to this light blue. But you could have made the background color actually dynamic. But the way that we've done this now is you can actually select different values inside of my slicer. And you should be able to see. There was actually a great example there. We selected Connecticut was red, Florida was yellow, Illinois was green. Those are based on the conditions that we just set inside of our properties. And again, you can see the slicer is formatted nicely. Now there's one last property or one last uh, property worth mentioning here. If we go back over to the formatting section, you'll see there's an option here called show tooltip. Right now, if you hover above this, there's not really a tooltip. But if you select turn on tooltip and go underneath this, you can see that it's going to show profit. 
okay? Now you can change the formatting of that. Right now it's showing profit as 4K, but we can change that from auto to none, and then it'll actually show the true value there of that profit. You can also change and, and kind of hard code in a tooltip if you'd like. And this can be anything you want. So this is what the tooltip looks like right now. It just says profit. But we can actually add in our own tooltip. So if we typed in something like test, and we put in something like value, just to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like, you can hover above this now, and you can see that it has another property up there called test, and the value is value. And so you can kind of uh, come in here and give this a title if you wanted to, or maybe you call this measure and value, and then that way whenever people look at it, they may almost see it as like a table with inside of your tooltip where you can see the measure that we're referring to as profit and the value that we're seeing is 33,601. So really up to you how you want to leverage that, but it's a way of being able to kind of hard code a value and pass it into the tooltip section. I'll go ahead and leave that on. The last bit here is just a little about page here where you can look and get more information about this visual. I happen to enjoy this one. I think it's a nice little one that allows you to customize it quite a bit. There's some cool little advanced settings that you could do, of course, as well, where you can maybe bring four of these together and it looks really nice when you bring four of them together. There's some kind of interesting things you can do with that. But play around with it on your own. I think you guys will enjoy this one. Again, it's nice because it's got the conditional settings, got the ability to adjust the way the visual actually looks, and it's uh, great that you can kind of get your hands on it and try it out for yourself. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module. Thanks a lot. Thank you.